Hey ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, you're watching CHN Tech and in this video I'm going to show you how to blur the background of an image in GIMP in order to emulate the shallow depth of field effect that you can see on photos taken with DSLR cameras. Now have in mind that the end result will not be identical to what you would get if you were using a DSLR but we're going to try to mimic that the best we can. So without any further ado, let's get straight to business. Okay, so let me just bring up GIMP and before we do anything, I always like to show which version of the software I'm currently using. So if I click on help and about GIMP, you can see right here that I'm using GIMP version 2.8.18. So with that said, let's get this out of the way and get straight to business. Let me just open up my folder where I have the image that we're going to be working on. As you can see right here, it's an image of a girl that is sitting on what appears to be the sidewalk. Now, if you take a close look at this image, you can see that it has a rather deep depth of field. Now, what we're going to be doing is blurring out the background while keeping the girl in focus in order to create a shallow depth of field effect, which in my opinion would look much more interesting for this particular photograph. So let's just close this. I'm going to click on the image file and I'm going to drag and drop it to GIMP. Let's just zoom out. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do is select the layer of the image and we're going to click on the duplicate button right here. Then we're going to select the top layer. We're going to click on filters, blur, Gaussian blur. I really do hope I'm pronouncing that right. Now make sure that these two values right here are linked. They should be by default, but in case they're not, then just link them right here. Now for horizontal, we're going to enter 40 and then simply by hitting enter on our keyboard, the same value should apply in the bottom box as well then simply click OK. So now as you can see, the image is all blurred out. So next we're going to click on this eye icon on the top layer in order to hide it. And what we're going to do now is create a selection around the subject, which in this case is this girl that is sitting on the sidewalk, and we're going to be doing that using the free select tool right here. So make sure to select the free select tool, zoom in on your subject, and try to make a precise selection. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm gonna make a fairly rough selection just to save up some time, but I would advise you guys to take as much time as you need right here as this step is very important. However, if you do make some mistakes, don't worry that much because you can always fix it, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a sec. So let me just speed things up here in order to save some time. Okay, so we're almost done. All we need to do now is close the selection and we're gonna do that by clicking on the first dot. And that should create the selection. Now let's zoom out a bit. Now this selection is very rough and in order to soften it out a bit, we're gonna click on select and then click on feather. Right here, we're gonna leave the default value, which should be five and we're gonna click okay. That should make the selection a bit softer. Now let's bring back the blurred out layer by clicking right here. Now we're going to make the subject visible. And we're going to do that by right clicking on the top layer, the one that's blurred out, and we're going to click on add layer mask. I'm going to leave the settings at default right here. Make sure that you have the same settings and then simply click on add. Now we're going to select a fuzzy brush. We're going to click right here. Let me select a fuzzy brush. I'm going to make it much bigger and the opacity is going to be 100%. Now click on the layer mask that you just created and then simply paint inside the selection. Don't worry about painting outside because the only parts that will be affected will be the ones inside the selection. Once you're done doing that, you can click on select, none, and that should get rid of the lines. Now if we zoom in on our subject, you can see that the selection that I created isn't really perfect. For example, you can see it at this part around the knees right here. And we're going to fix that using the layer mask and a fuzzy brush. So the way things are going to work is that black is going to act as sort of an eraser and in case you erase something by mistake, you can bring it back by using white. So as you can see right here, there's a little part right next to the knee that should be blurred out. And we're going to bring back the blur by lowering the size of the brush and we're gonna select white and then simply paint next to the knee. Notice how this dark spot is disappearing. 
Now, if by accident you do this, don't worry because you can always bring it back by hitting Control plus Z on your keyboard, or you can bring it back by selecting black and then painting on that part that you just accidentally screwed up. So again, this can be time consuming, but take your time, go around your subject and make sure to fix any errors or mistakes that you may have created while making the selection. Again, for the purposes of saving up time, I'm going to speed up this fixing process as well. Okay, so it's far from perfect, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to leave it at that. So as you can see right now, the girl in this photo is very clear while everything around her is totally blurred out. Now, of course, you don't need me to tell you that this doesn't look really natural. If we were creating this effect using a DSLR camera, the areas in front of the girl would be much more clear. So right now, we're going to try to emulate that effect using the blend tool. So select the blend tool right here. Make sure that the foreground color is black. We're going to lower the opacity to around 60%. Okay, 60.4 is fine. Then right here, we're going to select foreground to transparent. Everything else, we're going to leave at default. Now, the way you're going to do this will depend on the position of your subject. So you're not going to create the same gradient for every photo. Given the position of the subject in this particular photo, I find that the best gradient to create is the following. So I'm going to make sure to select the layer mask and I'm going to create the gradient like this. So as you can see right now, the closer parts are clear and as you go back, you can see that things are starting to get very blurry. Now one final thing you might want to do in order to make this a bit better is go back and select the fuzzy brush. Let's bring up the size a bit. We're going to bring down the opacity to around 50%, maybe even less. Okay, let's go 40. Make sure that the layer mask is selected. Okay, we're going to need a bigger brush, much bigger brush. And we're going to paint over the areas that are in front of the girl. and make them just a bit clearer. Once you're done, you can apply this layer mask by right clicking on it and simply clicking on apply layer mask. So now if I hide this top layer, you can see the difference. Let's bring it back and there you have it. So that would be all for this tutorial. If you found it useful or simply enjoyed watching it, please help out the channel by hitting that like button and sharing the video with your friends. For more content in the future, just hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and as always, stay strong.